Welcome to the home family gathering where everybody's got a place at the table in the father's house. We've got some people that won't be on the call today for various reasons. And um, they, they chimed in and this morning early and, and told me that they were either out of pocket or just could not be here today, but they will be able to listen to this call uh, be a recorded call. And um, I've had some things on my heart for quite some time, but I really believe Holy Spirit, has prompted me uh, to speak to um, the topic of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven uh, over the next few weeks. And for as long as, uh, you know, I kind of look at it this way, as long as Holy Spirit is speaking to a subject, I don't believe that uh, we have to necessarily come up with something new to say every week or that we have to leave a particular topic behind or we have to you say, well, this is old school for some and it's a fresh manna for others. There's always something to be heard that maybe we have not heard. There's always something to be seen that we have not seen. And so the things that I'm going to be sharing with you today are going to be based on a kingdom perspective, but they're also going to be based on, you know, let's just say where I have arrived over the past um, 50 years, um, I was kingdom, I was kingdom minded from the beginning and I had certain kingdom perspectives all along the way. But when I came into a better understanding of the kingdom, uh, I began to see and hear things differently. And I pray, uh, listen, I, I'm presenting this to you, not because I'm trying to persuade you differently or to uh, necessarily um, force my views on you. But it's my responsibility uh, to share with you uh, as much as I can and uh, in a, a clear and understandable way, it's, it's, it's really my responsibility to, to share truth with you for you to process and pray over and to consider uh, based on where you're at right now. We're not all in the same timeline and spiritual dimension. So I don't assume that everybody is going to be able to hear or understand everything I'm going to say. I never have. And so it, it's, it, it's important to me to be able to clearly communicate the Father's heart by Holy Spirit to you. And uh, I, pray, I, I pray that you will not just, you know, uh, be thinking about what I'm saying and, and coming back with a, uh, an answer at the end. I pray that you're not just going to be thinking about what you want to say about it or what point you want to bring out. I pray that you will absorb what I'm going to share and uh, let me speak out of my heart to you and out of a kingdom understanding that I've come to. And then from there, we'll process it from there. And listen, I, my belief system is in a constant state of, um, let's just say, uh, I won't say flux or a constant state of evolution, but I'll say that it's in a constant state of adjustment because I don't want to ever get to the place to where um, I arrive at, uh, you know, some position and, not, and be immovable from there. I don't want to ever get there. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm out here uh, on a quest for truth to prove myself wrong, but I am open to Holy Spirit and through our, our constant communication by, by the Spirit, I believe that, that, that further revelation is being unfolded on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. We're remembering who we were in creation before formation, and uh, we're identifying with the Son, the Son in us. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm, I'm thankful for each of you. I'm thankful for each of you, your, your parts, your place, your, your contribution, and where you're at in him. But I just want to share uh, over the next few weeks what Holy Spirit's been speaking to me. If, it's, if, if you'll bear with me, I'd appreciate it. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. So it is. Now that's a statement right out of the scripture. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. How long? Forever. So it is. 
We've never lived in a time when we need to know why, what we, listen, why we believe what we believe to be true from a kingdom perspective. We've never, we've never lived in a time like this. We've never lived in a time in this generation like we're living in right now when we need to know why we believe what we believe from a true, listen, what we believe to be true from a kingdom perspective. Most everybody I know is experiencing a reality, a reality check at some level, and they're in the process of making some necessary adjustments in their belief systems. Over the next few weeks, I will be speaking to what I believe to be some of the missing elements. Please bear with me as we explore truth concerning this topic. In my, listen, it is my intention to clearly speak to all that I presently know and understand to be true concerning the kingdom of Yahweh. This is the passage of scripture I'm gonna start with because it's one that's been dear to my heart for a long time. Yours, O Lord, or Yahweh, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty, indeed, everything that is in the heavens and in the earth. Everything that is in the heavens and in and the earth. Yours is dominion, O Lord, and you exalt yourself as head over all. Both riches and honor came from you, and you rule over all, and in your hand is power and might. And it lies in your hand to make great and to strengthen forevermore, ever, to strengthen everyone. Now, therefore, O oh God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. That's found in First Chronicles 29, verses 11 through 13. And I used in that passage the New American Standard Bible. But I want to ask you some questions right up front. Who prayed this prayer? When did it when did they pray it? And where where was this prayer prayed? The answer is right here in this light gray. David prayed the prayer long ago and in the assembly. David long ago prayed in the assembly this prayer. This is not a newer testament scripture. This is not a newer testament understanding. This is an older covenant, an older testament understanding based on a relationship. David was a gifted and anointed psalmist long before he was anointed king. Y'all agree with me? He was a gifted and anointed psalmist long before he was anointed king. When it came time for him to face Goliath, his claim to fame was that he had previously killed a lion and a bear. It was said of him that he was a man after Yahweh's own heart. In other words, when he spoke, prayed, or sang, it was from a kingdom perspective. David, was, David had prophetic insight into the heart of the Father because of a, his deep personal relationship with him. Yahweh saw something in David that authorized and qualified him to be the king of Israel. I want you to go over when you have time today and read 1 Samuel chapter 17. That's the account I'm talking about. I have some more questions for you right up front. What if I told you that nothing has, is, or will ever happen on earth that is not in accordance with Yahweh's will and purpose? What if I told you that neither man, alien, or other dimensional being will ever have the power to destroy Yahweh's creation? What if? Ponder these questions for yourself. The following prayer is known as the Lord's or Disciples' Prayer. The truth is, it is a pre-kingdom model and way of praying that is still mostly misunderstood. I chose the World English Bible translation for this passage. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done as in heaven, so on earth. Give us this day, give us today our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Bring us not 
into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. That's Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13 in the World English Bible. Praying this prayer from a kingdom perspective will help us answer the following questions. And here are the questions that Holy Spirit gave me. Why did Yahweh give the first man Adam dominion if he did not intend to be fruitful, multiply, fill, and subjugate the earth? Number two, why did he arrange, orchestrate, and terraform everything in the heavens and on earth to facilitate and accommodate the man of his creation? Think about this for a few minutes. Everything about our solar system was and is created in direct correlation to Yahweh's divine will and purpose. Yahweh's original intent for his creation was and is, everybody say this on your side of the camera, Say it, it's in the big letters, dominion. Say it, dominion. <laughs> in the beginning, before all time was the word or Christ and the word was with God and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. I said he was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. That is John, the gospel according to John, the first chapter, the first through the third verse in the Amplified Translation. Now think of this and consider this statement. The placement of earth in relationship to the other eight plus planets I said plus because they've now declassified Pluto and they found other planets. The placement of the earth in relationship to the other eight plus planets in our solar system is a mathematical equation that still boggles the minds of men. The reality that they've been specifically positioned in revolution around the sun has a lot to do with making this blue planet livable for Yahweh's creation. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about the solar system. We're talking about this planet and its placement and its position in relationship to the sun and its revolution, the revolution of our solar system within the Milky Way galaxy and the universe. We're talking about everything that had to be specifically put in a particular place and positioned in a specific place for the blue planet to work and to sustain the life of the man he created. Now think about that for a few minutes and let it, let it scramble your brain like it has mine. He, Yahshua, is the exact living image, the essential manifestation of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible, the firstborn, the preeminent one, the sovereign, and the originator of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible. I said, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created and exist through him. That is, by his activity and for him. And he himself existed, listen, he himself existed and is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He, his is the controlling cohesive force of the universe. That is Colossians 1 verses 15 through 17 in the Amplified. When you get a chance, I'm not going to read it right now, but this reference right here. Read Proverbs 8, 22 through 31 with additional understanding in relationship to Colossians 1, 15 through 17. Read Proverbs 8, 22 through 31 for yourself. But one of the things that stood out to me right here in Proverbs 8, verses 22 through 31, I won't read it all. I'm going to read these last two passages. Listen to this. In 30, it said, then I was beside him. 
as a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and having my delight in the sons of men. Ha! Woo! My God. Then Yahweh said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth. Where? Over the entire earth and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So Yahweh created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of Yahweh, he created him. Male and female, he created them, and Yahweh blessed them, granting them certain authority and said to them, what did he say to them? Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subjugate it, putting it under your power. <laughs> Is that what he said? And rule over, dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. And that's found, of course, in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th through the 28th verse, and I read it out of the Amplified. I'm going to stop right here today, and I just want to refer back to This first part. Why did Adam give the first, why did Yahweh give the first man Adam dominion if he did not intend to be fruitful, multiply, fill, and subjugate the earth? And why did he arrange, orchestrate, and terraform everything in the heavens and on the earth to facilitate and accommodate the man of his creation if we are not supposed to dominate? All right. That's part number one. And uh, let's just say this. The further we go with this, the more you'll begin to see something a little bit differently, maybe than you've seen. Maybe you've already seen it, but didn't know what to do with it. But the bottom line is, is that with the coming of the kingdom almost 2,000 years ago, the whole world was changed forever. And it's still being changed today in every generation. And we'll be talking about that the next time we come together. If you've got something you'd like to, to ask or comment on, just unmute yourself and say it. We're recording. Thank you. Questions or comments? I understand the need to let that incubate for a few minutes. <laughs> At Romans 8, I uh, read in Romans 8, 19, the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestations of the sons of God. For the creature was not made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who subjects all things in hope. Because a tree creature itself was delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So while the dominion has been given to us, and certainly we have been given, and yet in a fallen condition, I guess we can ask this, our next question, is it, is it to be exercised in our corruptible bodies as the sons of God? Or is it to be exercised in the world that is yet uh, in a un incorruptible body, where the creature itself shall also uh, be uh, redeemed. 
since uh, we still are in this corruptible body in a fallen world. And yet, is there still uh, the dominion, right? What point do we, uh, when it takes over our own lives, I've just said, at what point do we say uh, we have dominion over? Uh, and this is a big, it's a big area because uh, Romans 13 talks about the authority given by governments, but that was a limited authority. It was an authority across all, all, all subject matter. Uh, it actually was said that the governments in Romans 13 were given authority against those who commit evil deeds. Um, I, I, I understand. And, yeah. uh, and I, and I'm tracking, I'm tracking with you. Uh, a, a lot more will unfold as I, as I develop this, but, and it may even change all of our perspectives, some about what dominion really means and also uh, what, what, uh, how we're supposed to be operating now. Right. I'm not talking about world domination in that respect or taking control of, uh, of earthly governments. Mm. Yahshua didn't come doing that. Neither did his uh, disciples who became apostles do that. Matter of fact, we'll get to that, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to go too fast and run out ahead and, um, you know, basically, basically jump out in front of where we're going. But I, but I do, I do, I am tracking with you. I hear what you're saying. Is there anything specific that I said or anything surrounding what I said that, that uh, maybe we need to reconsider concerning the earth and how Yahweh feels about it and what Yahweh feels about his man in the earth. And so, you know, it's, um, I'll get to this. I will, I promise you, I'm not going to leave you hanging, but I can't, I don't want to cover all of it in one day. It's just too much information. Has anything been said uh, either peripherally or otherwise that uh, has caused a thought or a, a question to rise? Go ahead and unmute yourself. No, I think our redemption is um, is a part of the kingdom, is a result of us getting come into the kingdom. Yeah. Whereby he has broken the power of sin in us. He has given us himself living by the way of his spirit. And there is a new way, a new life that has begun. And maybe uh, it would also, if I were to, if I were to mm, encapsulate what you said, said uh, Blake, I would say it, it is the um, it is the result of the new creation, the new creation in Jesus Christ. Yeah, and and that's true. And we're going to trust me. Trust me now when I when I tell you we're going to cover all these bases and all of our perspectives concerning the kingdom. Uh, come on earth as it is in heaven and dominion may change during this course of time because what I'm seeing and hearing is coming out of a completely different understanding and narrative than what you see. Uh, let's say, let's just say what Islam represents and what they believe to be true and Sharia law and all of that, what dominionists have uh, in, the, in times past forwarded and, uh, and, what, and what militant organizations are saying today, even concerning this government, that's not where I'm going. But um, let's just say this, just to keep us, keep us within the bounds today, um, if, the, if, the, if the kingdom come, if, king, if the kingdom coming starts with you, and then all of a sudden what you represent in the earth begins to bring order and government to the world in which you live, starting with your own family, then all of a sudden your influence is going to become great and even threatened at times, as has been since the beginning. And uh, what if I told you, I'll just tell you this part, Holy Spirit spoke directly to me this morning and he said, uh, he said, he said, the coming of the kingdom and kingdom dominion has very little to do with the serpent-free garden. I'll leave that part with you. 
Does anybody have anything else you'd like to say? Even if it's not on point, I don't want you to feel paralyzed or shut down because this topic has, uh, has caused us all to pause and calmly think about it. I want you to be able to share your heart on this call, and we've got plenty of time, 25 more minutes, uh, to share our heart on this call concerning anything that, that surrounds this topic. So unmute yourself if you've got something you'd want to ask or make a comment on. There is a place